submitted for the Office of National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, ONC, to innovators redefine health, introducing the idea of co-creation of trust for healthcare. Hi, I'm Peter Nickel, healthcare leader, passionate about digital innovation and blockchain. Today, I'm going to present a proposal paper authored by Jeff Brandt and myself. Jeff is an expert in mobility, security, and healthcare. My expertise is in digital innovation and also healthcare. Together, we created a great paper for the ONC Blockchain Challenge. Who spends time to write a 10-page proposal paper that is going to a government agency? Everyone knows that even if the papers are read, nothing will happen, right? We as a society have to believe in something, and if we're going to invest time, improving the health of a nation is a first noble step. First, let's talk about who's behind the blockchain challenge anyways. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, in partnership with the ONC, or Office of National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, most of us know as ONC, launched a request for papers recently called the ONC Blockchain Challenge. The ONC is looking to explore the use of blockchain in health IT and health-related research. The submission period for papers did close on August 8th. The winner will be privately notified on August 22nd, and the official public announcement will be issued on August 29th. ONC and NIST partnered on this initiative, but why did they do that? The ONC is responsible for the national healthcare interoperability. NIST is a measurement standards laboratory and a, a non-regulatory agency of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Its mission is to promote innovation and industrial competitiveness. Many IT leaders, including myself, associate NIST mainly with 853, a standards document that recommends security controls for information systems and organizations. However, that just scratches the surface of what NIST can do. NIST's mission extends much further. NIST is an organization laboratory program that includes nanoscale science, technology, engineering, information technology, neutron research, material measurements, and even physical measurements. ONC aligning with NIST is an interesting partnership and signals that security and policy are tightly coupled. Together, these two organizations have the potential to create a national standard for health interoperability, a new secure standard for healthcare. Let's talk about the paper that Jeff and I submitted. Together, the paper we submitted is titled, The Co-Creation of Trust for Healthcare, the Crypto Citizen Framework for Interoperability with Blockchain. The paper goes into a lot of detail. However, for our discussion today, I'm going to cover two topics. First is the importance of consensus, and second is crypto citizens and why both are critical to healthcare interoperability. One great example is consensus from Micronesia. While generalities are plentiful, we took the time to research the story by William Henry Furness, and William visited the island in 1903. He also wrote a book about the island's stone money, titled The Island of Stone Money Yap of the Carolines. This book was published in 1910 and is a bit hard to find. Discovered by the Portuguese in 1527 and lying about 9 degrees north of the equator is the 39 square mile island of Yap and is also the most western of the Carolina Islands. Yap is also part of the Federated States of Micronesia located in the Pacific Ocean. The Yapis did not use money. Their medium of exchange and value was called fey. These large coins or rye stones were stone wheels ranging from one foot in diameter to 12 feet with a hole in the center where a pole typically could be inserted for transportation. These rye stones could weigh up to 8,800 pounds and as a result, it wasn't really practical to transfer a stone physically from the seller to the buyer to make a payment. Therefore, the community would rather meet at the council square in the center of the village where all the chiefs would meet when discussing important affairs of the tribe. Here, it was agreed that a transfer was being made from family A to family B. Additionally, because of the weight of the rye stones, typically eight strong men were needed to move the stones. In a sense, building a community consensus for the ownership of transfer. For example, if I publicly announce I stole my stone and gave it to Bob for a dowry, it would be quite difficult for me to then resell that same stone, as the whole village would know that I gave it to Bob. Even though it's on my property, I don't own the stone. This is what we mean when we speak of consensus. 
the parallel to healthcare would be improving the authenticity of medical records is a good use case. A doctor isn't guessing if medical information of the patient is valid. He or she would know if the information was altered by any unauthorized sources. The second topic is the crypto citizen. We define the term crypto citizen and the impact on interoperability by stating that the crypto citizen is a concept of shared societal trust, where citizens have a new relationship with authorities, reducing government involvement in decentralization, mainly improving the availability of government services versus citizens being directly governed. The core framework of interoperability revolves around the crypto citizen and the primary idea of self-sovereignty. We outlined in the paper that self-ownership or individual autonomy is one of the core concepts in one owns person expressing as a moral or natural right of the person to have bodily integrity and to be the exclusive controller of his or her own, own body or life. This means that the data is also associated with that individual. Tilting this definition slightly, we can apply self-ownership to healthcare and ownership of patient information. Self-sovereignty identity is guided by the principle that every patient is a source and therefore owner of their own identity. Patient created, therefore patient owned. But how does this relate to interoperability? If a provider can't identify a patient, how are the patient's medical records accessed? How does medical and treatment information flow between facilities? Today, information does not pass seamlessly between healthcare entities. The patient has to request, often med multiple times, their medical information, and even the transfer of information is in inefficient, often communicated by email or even fax. Our paper presents the argument that self-sovereignty with distributed consensus is the, en is the enabler to empower patients and take back control of their medical identities. The pinnacle of medical records interoperability is patient-controlled medical records. With blockchain technologies, patient can own and control the identity, access their data, and conditionally authorize the sharing of medical records with payers and providers. The ONC and NIST blockchain challenge has the potential to open the mind of society and introduce the possibility that blockchain frameworks will solve our patient identity problem, finally achieving national healthcare interoperability. I hope you found today's video beneficial. Please stay tuned for future topics. Thanks.